Hello everyone, welcome to Fracture, the new map. There's a lot to talk about, so let's just dive straight in into the map. The map is beautiful. It has one side that is green, lush, and the other one, which is arid, dry, and, you know, just basically a desert, right? This is where the map just got split. Basically, essentially, the world got split by a random bullet that hit the generator here. Uh, think about this map as a um, airport terminal, but instead of an airport, it's a teleport terminal. So this is like the theme of the of the, of the map, right? So there are some key features. Uh, you have you have two spawns, one attacker side spawn here where you all spawn, but you can cross using the zip lines to the other side. So you can just take one of the zip lines, always on the right side. You cannot stop on it. You cannot go here. This is a one way street, right? So you just press, use. You can go while shifting without making a noise, but you cannot stop. And then you land on the other side. And you can go back with this zipline as well. So this is the other side of the spawn. Where the barriers are also very close. Let's do a quick rundown of the map. Because the map is very complicated. I love it. Uh, it's actually very fun to play. Something completely different to what I've seen in the past. And it's very quick. Very quick. The engagements are insanely fast. So let's drop the barrier. And when we're dropping the barrier. And a wide swing here. There can be already a player here. Like in this spot, there can be already a player. If he wide swings as well, we have contact in the first second. It's literally nuts, you know? And the map is, because of the way that it works, because of the, the way it's being built, uh, you have a lot of pressure made on the defenders just from the beginning. Because you pin some, you make like a pin some movement, right? You go from this side, you go from this side, and you try to attack one of the sides from both sides, actually right remember the defender side spawn is in the middle of the map this is where they start which is bonkers now also a very important thing about orbs this is the first map in valorant that has more than two orbs there are actually four let me draw it on the map here we go the mini map right and there are four orbs one is here that's one orb where i'm currently standing second orb is here third orb is here and fourth orb is here so as you can see this changes the dynamic of the of the game like completely agents like sky absolutely insane on the map have also a big buff when it comes to the potential ult orbs that i can just get every single round so you can ult even more times than on ascent or on breeze which makes the character almost broken in my eyes uh the same applies to phoenix and Yoru might be actually very playable on this map because his kit is actually useful. Fake steps, the teleport, uh, and, and uh, the ult orbs essentially make him very efficient at what he can do, which is confuse the opponents because the map is essentially just like a big, big confusion. Um, so remember, he can be on, the, on, on one of the sides of the map, right? He can put a teleport here, an example, right? Then take a zip line to the other side, attack from here, flash do fake footsteps like a two pair right so there's like a massive push from this from this side then you teleport back to uh back to the other side right and then after that after that you can essentially just do whatever you want you can be a lurker or you can join your teammates that went to a because that was a like a big big fat uh, fake it's phenomenal like there's many options it's gonna be a nightmare to play ranked in because people will have no clue what is going on so yeah that's gonna be nuts. Anyway, so four orbs, right? Let's take a let's take a look at the map. So the, here we go. There's the B side. It's very open. There's uh, a safe spot to plant in here, right? But of course, there can be defenders here. So remember, all of those can be shot through. Uh, those are penetrable when it comes to radiant boxes. This is penetrable as well. Uh, here, uh, this is not. Oh, actually, never mind. You can shoot through to here. That's interesting. Didn't know about that. Uh, might not be the case. Yeah, I think it just hits the wall. Anyway. So this is the B side. It has the small cubby area. It has a tunnel up top. Which essentially connects to the other side of the spawn. And this is where the second orb is, right? So uh, this is like the second way the attackers can go, can go through. For the other side of the map from here. If they cross from spawn... On the zip line, they can go through here and basically pinch your opponents. And then there's, there's the connector between both 
uh, both angles, right? So that's one of the sides. Now let's go from the other, um, other side of the map. So we're going to be attacking A, let's say from the default spawn without crossing the zip lines, right? So you go here, you have the first orb, your first contact will be behind this box. Once you reach here, your opponent can be already standing here, right? So this is very important. Skies can like flash around this corner and try to attack you. Now there's another gimmick. There are doors here, which you can open if you stand in this area. Once you step here, they are opened. And they close after a few seconds if you're not standing in this area. Of course, you can penetrate them. This opens up this entire connector here with the rope and another tunnel, which leads to the defender side spawn, right? But the main entrance to the site goes through here, which is a big, uh, big corridor with a smaller, smaller hallway. And as you can see, this is the teleport terminal where you can read where the teleport goes and that the, all of the, um, teleportations are delayed. Sad man. Sad. Anyway, this is the A side. It's completely different from the B side because it has, first and foremost, a lot of safe locations to plant. You can plant in this spot, and this is not penetrable. This is, of course. You have a safe spot as well here in this corner, which is then pretty easy to defend in post-plant, but you, can, you also have the first level where all of this is penetrable in general, right? But you can always, always just plant in this corner and you have easy frags if someone just taps the spike, right? This is, uh, this is easily penetrable by, by any weapon that has even medium, right? I actually, I'm actually not sure about, uh, about low, probably not. Uh, we can check it with classic. Oh, depends on the angle, I guess. Depends on the angle. They can go through or not. So it can always deal like some minimal, minimal damage. Now, um, the other side that you can attack through is through the dish, right? So if we if we if we take the zip line to the other side of the attacker spawn and we go left, we go to the desert area where's the satellite dish here, and there's the fourth orb. Right? Your opponents, the defenders, when you cross from here, can be already close behind this rock or behind the dish. So there's already a very intense action here, because the barrier is here. This is where the barrier is, and the, the defenders can be standing on this spot or just waiting for you here behind the dish. Now, this is the drop to A side, which is a place where you cannot drop without making noise. At least I think so. Yeah, I don't think you can just go here. Yeah, you're gonna make noise. So essentially, this is this is like an explosive entrance, right? If you want to to go exp um, with, with a huge force without lurking, this is this is the way, right? Because um, you can essentially like try to. Well, it's pretty open actually. You, you're gonna need massive like amount of utility to cut off all the corners here. Uh, but yeah, this is the the corridor with the rope with the with the opening doors, right? And now when it comes to the defender spawn, well, as you can see. It's in the middle of the entire map. Here, I'm standing, right? And now you have to decide, do I go B, do I go A? And if I go... If I go A, then you have to decide another way. Uh, another two decisions you have to make. Do I go take control of Dish? Or do I t just play on side and wait for people to drop from, uh, from the drop, right? Which is very similar to bind hookah this is essentially the hookah area you wait for people to drop out of it right and then you have the open um open corridor with that orb and as i said this is like a good moment for sky to just you know flash and peek when someone is taking the orb and then when it comes to defending a sorry b when you go and defend B, there's uh, I feel like B is actually harder to defend. This is probably the side where you have you're gonna default by having three defenders. Right? This is the big corridor with the orb when the attackers come through. Right? This is the spawn here, uh, and it's the more open side which can be attacked from those two angles. Right? So this this, this I feel like this side is actually pretty rough to hold. Because even if someone is standing here, right, he can be easily tapped by a good cross-up placement. And if you kill one, like, yeah, you can hide because this is not penetrable, unless it's, you know, the corner. 
but then you go out and you're out in the open from those people here attacking the site, right? So um, it, it's it's gonna require a lot of uh, a lot of utility, a lot of uh, teamwork to actually play well. Um, there's there's gonna be a lot of uh, situations where you're gonna be relying on a Cypher, Killjoy, Sova, Sky utility to just get info. This is why I think on this map, Sky is basically a must take. Uh, so is probably Sova. So you play double initiators, right? And then a Cypher or a Killjoy is a must-take as well. And then, of course, you kind of need a Smoker too. And then probably Jet, because Jet is obviously broken on this map with the ability to dash on site and create a lot of pressure. Uh, so, yeah. But every agent, I feel like it's actually playable. Phoenix and Yoro might be good choices as well. Um, every agent that has a very cheap uh, utility, including the ultimate with the six orbs, is gonna be very playable because of the amount of orbs that you have on this on this map. But in general, the map is um, it's complicated, rewarding to play, very confusing at the beginning, you know? Uh, but I feel like it's gonna be one of those maps that you're gonna learn to love, unless you, are, you don't like Icebox or Breeze, because, you know, those are complicated maps. And we have a lot of people who don't like them for some reason. So, uh, this is a map exactly like that. You're gonna have less angles to check, because the map is not as open as Icebox or Breeze, so you have, uh, you know, less verticality, in example. But in general, it's one of those maps where it's insanely complicated to play because of the map control aspect, uh, because you're gonna have to play off your teammates very well. You're gonna be dependent on your teammates a lot which is, you know, pretty tough to do in solo queue, but when it comes to playing with friends, I feel like this, is this map is gonna be great, and it's a completely different angle of um, tactical FPSs, because I didn't see a map like that yet, yet you know? Like, it, it breaks the, the, uh, it breaks the um, fundamental rules of map building uh, in general in tactical FPS. There's no clear, like, you know, half... The map is just completely different, and it's very cool. So I'm very happy that Riot is trying to experiment, and I hope you guys liked it, and there's another video with some gameplay on it. Uh, I think it's an, on Euro, and we have some shorty kills on Mitch. Anyway, you guys have fun. More games soon on this map. It's actually pretty awesome.